Uh, let's return now to our story on the tension between Saudi Arabia and Iran. We're joined from Beirut by Joseph Kashishian. He's a senior fellow at the King Faisal Center for Research and Islamic Studies. Joseph, thank you for your time. Uh, we've Hello. seen uh, recently how, how these repercussions have, between these two nations, have reverberated right across the Middle East. And Kuwait has now retracted its ambassador to, to Iran. Are we likely to see any easing of these tensions anytime soon? Unfortunately, probably not anytime soon. They will need to have uh, a period, a cooling off period between the two sides. It might take a few months, a few years. It's hard to tell. The last time when diplomatic relations were broken back in 1988, relations were not reestablished until three years later. So therefore, I'm not sure how fast we're going to go this time around. Although uh, conditions today are far worse. Uh, regional upheavals are far worse than they were back in the 1980s. Presumably, there is a great deal of interest to bring both Iran and Saudi Arabia back together as quickly as possible, but I am not holding my breath. Well, the U.S. Secretary of State, John Kerry, he called for calm on both sides of this tension. Is the intervention of the U.S. and these kind of comments likely to help defuse the situation, given that you, for one, aren't holding your breath? Well, one hopes that when large powers like the United States and others speak, that perhaps they carry some influence, although the world in which we live today is far different from the ones in which these major powers gain their influence and, and power around the world. So therefore, it's going to be much more difficult. It's not sufficient to simply for a secretary of state or a foreign minister of a leading power to utter a few good wishes so that people put their differences aside and come around the table and negotiate. I think a lot more needs to be done. In this particular instance, the United States and the other P5 plus one countries, the permanent members of the Security Council in Germany, have tried to drag Iran back from its uh, isolation, back into the civilized world. They've had a hard time doing this because Iran is divided. And now, with Saudi Arabia breaking diplomatic relations, the onus really is on the P5 plus one to make sure how they can reconcile the two contradictory positions. It's going to be much tougher than at any previous time. And Mr. Kashishian, if we look at this on an economic level, Saudi, Saudi Arabia and Iran are major oil producers. If this crisis does continue, how do you see that affecting the international economy? Well, I think that this is not the first time when the price of oil has really collapsed. Uh, it had gone down before and it will probably go up again. This is a cyclical phenomenon. And I think that unless we have a major global economic crisis, we're not going to have the price of oil determine whether or not Iran and Saudi Arabia will put all of their socio-political differences aside simply for economic gains. I think it's much more complicated than that. And mind you, Iran loses a lot more when it comes to the collapse of the price of oil than Saudi Arabia does, simply because its expenses are much higher, its population is much bigger, and its economy is much more vulnerable because of the sanctions that are still lingering on uh, Iran. Saudi Arabia does have a large reserve, a base. It can draw on it for a few months, a few years. But obviously, in the long term, it is in both countries' interest to make sure that the price of oil goes back so that the economies of both countries don't suffer unduly. But again, this is a long-term proposition. I do not think that the price of oil is a determinant factor here. I think there are far more serious sectarian, political and social issues at play. Joseph Kassishian in Beirut, thank you.